Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel aka Lilyworks and today I have a lot of bling to show you. A lot of lots from our Lilyworks Jewels and Lots. This is our district buy and sell platform specifically for jewelry. We've been selling a lot of lots on there and I have been purchasing from you guys some pieces that I'm gonna be putting into my antique booth. And then some, as you can see here, are for my own collection. This is a Robert Lee Morris uh, choker necklace, very Soho, boho, <laughs> and my style. And uh, I don't have one of those one of his pieces yet, so I definitely wanted to grab one. Um, people are putting up really great deals and then able to advertise them on our Lilyworks Buy and Sell Jewelry Facebook page. So as that Facebook page grows, the um, number of viewers who see you, what you post or what I post uh, is going to, um, I guess, be seen more. And I can talk about this a little bit more, but let me get into showing you guys some of the bling. I am so excited to learn about some of these pieces with you guys and just enjoy the sparkle. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Okay, <clears throat> so we already see a lot of really beautiful things right here in front of us, and I'm going to go over a lot of these pieces and why I picked them out. But first, I want to say thank you um, for this friend mail. Lisa sent some Valentine's Day cards and these really pretty um, charm necklaces on sterling silver chain for my girls with a little cross did you make these? <laughs> they are so sweet. So they came in like a little bag and the girls didn't even want to take them off for me to show them. So this was super sweet for Valentine's Day. And thank you to everyone else who sent Valentine's Day cards for my girls. Uh, they are homeschooled. So they made Valentine's Day card boxes. So on Facebook, I was just like, if anyone wants to send them uh, any cards, uh, and some of you guys actually did. Um, so that was so sweet and generous of you guys, so thank you. And I also got other friend mail as well, but let's take a look at this. This lot came um, from, well, I know she's posting a lot of lots, so I know her her district name is like Foxy Stain Girl. <laughs> I think that's, and she puts fox stickers all over everything and says, have a foxy day. And her lots are selling super well on district on our group pay or I'm sorry on our group store and yeah you can see and I actually am picking out pieces to put into my antique booth be and so the reason is because um instead of just delisting a bunch of things from my eBay store I decided to just you know buy more inventory and find things that have like some bling and sparkle things that can can capture attention by people like walking by, if you know what I mean. So, so let's get into these massive pieces. <laughs> I mean, I think if I was at the antique store, these would stop me in my tracks. And yes, even like that detail under the big marquee shaped glass. Do you see that? That is insane. Prong set amber tone rhinestones, more rhinestones as a fan. These are clip on um, climber earrings, very, very statement. And these are by the brand Judy Lee. So, my how I'm going to be uh, pricing things in my antique booth is like I'm pricing, I'm probably going to be pricing a little bit more competitively, uh, like just a little bit below what I would price. Um, on eBay because I'm going to be one of, the, I think, the only like big jewelry vendor right now at the moment. So if there are some like uh, girls, you know, dress dressy, blingy gals that are shopping and want to shop for vintage jewelry, they will, you know, head to my booth. So, um, so these, yes, these are a definite 
booth piece and if they don't sell I don't know I don't know how long I'm even gonna give pieces but if they don't sell I'm you know I have no problem um, switching out inventory and listing on eBay I do really well with eBay um, and then for me I'm using district more as like a place where I'm lotting things up but a lot of you guys are actually getting some good sales um, doing individual pieces as well so yeah, we will see how that all pans out. Um, let's go to another one of my favorite pairs of earrings here. Look at these. So it looks almost like a smoky topaz, but probably just, you know, glass. And then that oil slick coated glass rhinestone. These are some cluster clip-ons. And these are marked West Germany on the back. I really do like selling West Germany jewelry and then I feel like these are also a standout piece. Uh, yes, love that. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at these classic and classy clip-ons right here. These feel just so smooth. The sides and edges are like um, domed and faceted so lovely. They remind me of like the French jet buttons. My mom collects um, the glass, the black glass French jet um, style buttons. So these totally remind me of them. And these are actually by Hobay. There we go. Hobay is definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. This is, um, I'm just really like, I just am so pleased whenever I can get Hobay or any higher end costume jewelry in my hands, uh, particularly because I just really like to feel them and touch them so I know what to look out for. And so if you guys are, you guys haven't found some of these brands um, in, you know, your uh, jewelry unboxings or whatever, don't be afraid to buy reseller lets like this on our district because even though you know, maybe you're not going to sell it all right away and, you know, get five times your profit. But I'm definitely going to be making profit on these for sure. But um, I think even more importantly is like feeling high quality, learning about brands, um, just having some good, nice things. And I wanted to put some nice things in the booth so that people will know, okay, this person doesn't just have, you know, bins to dig through. They also do have some nicer stuff behind glass and I can regularly come here if I'm looking for something. So that's the idea. All right. Ooh, these are so feminine and floral and textured, puffy. Look at these. Those are so lovely. All right, let's see. What are they? They are merino. I have sold merino. I've only sold silver tone merino and they definitely were not as feminine. These are more feminine and look at like this layered look. Interesting. Lovely. Okay. These right here were super interesting to me because I want to research these a little bit more. This like um, opaque frosted glass look totally reminds me of, um, what am I thinking of? Not Vaseline glass. What am I thinking of? Uh, it escapes me. And then there's like these carved edges right here. See the carved edges to give it sparkle. So there, there are no rhinestones in there. It's just, um, that carved look. Okay. So on the back, this one is hard to read, but this one is a little bit easier to read. I have super glue on my hand right there. Actually, no, that's tape. Yeah, this is antique booth life right here. Okay, and permanent marker. Okay, what does this say? I think it says silver and check. So it says check C Z E C. H and then it says Checo. Oh no, it says Checo. Oh, it says Czechoslovakia all the way around. I literally thought it said something else. So Czechoslovakia, these are lovely. 
Isn't that so awesome? I love Czechoslovakia and Austria jewelry. Also, um, it's good to handle Czech jewelry and Austria jewelry, uh, German jewelry, because then you start familiarizing yourself with the different ways that these countries like made their jewelry pieces. So if you come across an unmarked necklace, you might think, oh, this reminds me of Czechoslovakian glass or something like that. There are those. Okay, next. Oh, AB rhinestone flowers. Lovely, classic. What are these? Ooh, hard to read. Looks like Coro, I'm thinking. Coro a lot of times is hard to read. Yeah, I think that's Coro. Um, so these are some Coro clip-ons. Um, so she also sent the box <laughs> that these came in. All right, next we have LaRue, L-E-R-U. It has like a filigreed back. I have never heard of or sold LaRue before. That is interesting. So it's kind of like an ombre leaf with amber tone rhinestones, prong set. Huh, interesting. So I'm going to have to research these a little bit more, but I think I want to put these in the booth as well because they are interesting. Okay, we see some milk glass, 1950s or 60s uh, milk glass clip-ons. So I do see plastic back here, which is making me think that these are higher end <laughs> clip-ons again. And yes, these are more Hobay clip-on earrings. Really interesting shape to, wow, they're actually even curved. They look like bones, but then they're like curved together. So that is super fun. Milk glass cluster earrings. Okay, next. Let's grab these rhinestones. Okay, so we have these. These are very classic to the brand. And so if you see this like clear rhinestone look, this like old Hollywood glam rhinestone look, um, if it is marked, usually it's marked um, Eisenberg or Weiss or Kramer. And these are actually Weiss. So these are some Weiss, like dainty, dainty for a cluster rhinestone. Cute. We have some classic um, crystal maybe? Rhinestones? Let's see, what does it say? Oh, Laguna. Laguna. Laguna uses a lot of like the clear glass and the faux pearls even black glass, like um, cut rhinestones, some more classic <clears throat> earrings. We have some white enamel leaves. And oh, these are, what are they? More coral, I think, right? It's wearing away or just coral doesn't know how to stamp things. Okay, we have more screw backs and these are rhinestones that are prong set. Why are these marked? There is the rivets in the back. Hmm, are they marked? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look a little closer. I don't think so, that's okay. Lovely, maybe like 1940s. And then last in this box, I think, are these faux pearl with that sweet little clear rhinestone at the bottom gives it like an elevated elegant look and these are by the brand Marvella and Marvella does a lot of glass faux pearls and so it's like that nice heavy weight and you can tell it's cold makes that clinky sound instead of the clunky sound <laughs> and yeah nice Okay, and then here's the box, and I will probably put the box in my booth too, and maybe use it as a display. All right, so we have those, and let's get into this over here. And you guys, if you guys watched my live, you know that I've only done half <laughs> of the 
um, jewelry unboxing over there. So I pushed it to the side. I still have my boxes over there, my yes, no, maybe boxes. And I decided I got all of this mail in today. And I'm like, I'm going to share this so that I can start cleaning and, and um, tagging these for the antique booth. And the antique booth is opening March 1st. So that's in a couple days. And I'm, yeah, just, I have to keep going. Yay. Um, so one thing before I get into these, I wanted to say one thing more about, I think what it, the evolution of like the district platform or, their so, or using social media to market. So I have been, um, putting like, if you guys list something and say it's a, um, wearable reseller lot, I will post it to different Facebook uh, pages like costume jewelry lot sales or something like that. And I'm posting it in there and I'm noticing that, or even like Southwest jewelry sales, there are a lot of people in those groups that are scammers. <laughs> and like you take the money through PayPal and you send it and, or, or whatever. And people are complaining left and right that they are being scammed, blah, blah, blah. So the thing with like district is it is buyer protected, seller protected, just like any other platform. But now we are using more social media. So when I am posting these to other um, Facebook groups, and then we have our own Facebook group for buy and sell, it is a lot safer. So I do think that that is a really good plus that we are getting into because people are making sales left and right on Facebook. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting to see how everything is working out. Okay. So yay. Look at how absolutely gorgeous this is. These faux, I'm sorry, fall <laughs> colored rhinestones, green, orange, and I don't know, like a tangerine orange. Um, and then on the back, at first I didn't see it, but if we look closer, turn it around, it does say uh, Made Austria right there. And that is super exciting for me because you guys know that I collect Austria jewelry and I love it. My family somewhere down the line came from Austria so I absolutely love it. And so that is one piece that I'm probably not being, not, it's not going into the antique booth. So yay, I'm keeping that one. Um, and then this gorgeous, how gorgeous, how gorgeous. This is a, this is a like stop and ooh, what is that? Right? Cause it has just this monster of a rhinestone. And then they put this like small edge to it to like even emphasize it a little bit more with these like little almost like Florida de lis details, lighter toned rhinestones. And let's see, it has the C clasp here. So it could potentially be Victorian. Maybe no, it has this. No. So I don't think it is. Um, I think this is a little bit later but even the back has detail to it. So that is super, super gorgeous. And it doesn't need a maker's mark. It is gorgeous on its own. Okay, next we have this one. It looks, um, it, honestly, it looks very Art Deco, but honestly earlier than Art Deco. Again, we have this kind of clasp. It is missing one rhinestone and let's guess what it would be. Um, so we see blue, blue, and maybe red, red, but then there's like no pattern to these right here because there's pink and pink right here, green and green. So I'm wondering if I could just randomly choose one of these color rhinestones and replace it in there. Um, I, I also have sold, I think this is Czechoslovakian. I might be wrong, but this Czech look, um, jewelry before, and it has been missing stones. So yeah, but I, I think I will try to find a replacement stone for that. 
And then we have some more that I want to put in my collection. So these are probably going right to my collection. I love the Florida leaves and these are, they both have the C-class. Now I do think that these are actually Victorian. This one looks like it's brass. Um, and then it might, well, let's see. Do we think that it was like made into a pendant? What is this? Oh, wait. Was it maybe like a hat pin or a stick pin and then they turned it into a brooch? What are our thoughts on this? Because this piece is bent up. Interesting. Super interesting. It honestly has like the back looks brass, but the front looks gold, doesn't it? Like a lower um, carrot gold. Honestly, it really does. Um, so that's interesting. And then, oh, this one is so gorgeous. Again, this looks like a lower carrot gold, like a 10 carat. Uh, and this has that floor to leave, this little raised thing. This is, I really think that this is old Victorian style. I know that Hannah or Janine or Casey, you guys could all tell me what, <laughs> what era this is from. Um, I don't know if Sunday Bobbles I don't know if she watches my channel, but she is like super, super, super knowledgeable about basically any vintage jewelry piece. <laughs> Honestly, it's like so insane. So um, yeah, this is gorgeous. Love that. All right. We have a ring lot. Let me pull out some more pieces here. Okay. We have some more... <laughs> some more. Uh, yeah, a lot of really, really pretty things. Ooh, yay. Okay. Let's get into some of these pieces. So I did buy like a bling brooch lot. Again, I'm like thinking of people at the antique store and the bling, right? So, uh, here is a blue brooch. It honestly looks very similar to pot metal. So these are like the paste rhinestones in there. I could be wrong. I don't know. The front reminds me of it though. Um, no maker's mark or anything, but this is a blingy <laughs> piece that will stop somebody who loves the blue and the bling. So I got that one. We see this little guy over here that very much reminds us of the, the Juliana, D&E, Juliana... Navette butterfly. I'm not sure if this is. I mean, I could try Google lensing, but I also collect Navette brooches and jewelry. I don't know. There's something about this skinny Navette look. A lot of people call marquee stones as Navettes, and that might be true, like these more chubby <laughs> marquee stones. But well, I don't know. I just like calling the really skinny ones Navette. Um, t that's just, that's just what I say. So, um, I don't see any puddling or anything like that. That's indicative and will tell me, yes, this is Juliana or anything like that, but this is absolutely gorgeous. It has multi color, I'm sorry, multi-tone pinks in it. Just oh, so pretty. Yay. And it just looks really well made. We have this little guy. Oh, there's a heart. Is this coral, maybe? Um, and then it has like a little marking. I don't remember if this listing said what this is. Is it cremins, maybe? Maybe like gold-filled cremins. Cremins does a lot of the little um, tiny jewelry. I think this might say gold-filled. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit hard to read here. Let me just take a peek. Yes, it does say cremence and it has a little sweet little heart. There's that one. <clears throat> I might put that one online just because in the antique booth, it might not stand out. 
um, as much as some of these other pieces. So yeah, the little dainty one I might put online. We have this snowflake sunburst flower, pointed flower, whatever. Again, this looks like pop metal. <laughs> it totally does. This one actually looks more like pop metal. It probably is. These are um, not prong set, but just um, foil backed rhinestones, clear rhinestones. All the rhinestones are there in good shape. There's that one. And then this one is actually really exciting to me. Really, it really, really is. Like, I love this one so much. This one's going in the booth and I'm pricing it up. This one also has a maker to it. Uh, on the back, there's a cartouche right there. And it says Givenchy, Givenchy right there. So this is super exciting. It is also a cross. It has the emerald green rhinestones, clear baguettes, high end couture. One of the baguettes, I think, yeah, right there is just dying very slightly. But otherwise, this is in great shape. Like, this is glorious. This is so stunning. I am so excited about this one. Definite, definite, yes, yay. <laughs> that one is so exciting. Okay, this came from a subscriber. Uh, let me see. It came from... So this one came from a subscriber. I believe this came from Lori. Um, she came across these, I think they're the Crown Trifari, right? Um, these letters, and you guys know I've been loving the Crown Trifari lately, and she found an R, and she also found an A, um, because my name is Rachel Ann. <laughs> so that is so sweet. So thank you so much. She also sent me some other extra pieces, which we'll get to. So that was so sweet. Sent me some mail, told me that the lobster claw clasp started in the eighties <laughs> cause she's an eighties girl. Um, I heard nineties, you know, don't come for me. That's what I heard. So, uh, yeah, so there's those. Let's Get, I want to save some of these rings because I want to test them with the Presidium because some of these, like this, I'm like, what it, What are these? <laughs> what is happening? Maybe glass? Not even sure. Okay, so we have this like clip-on earring set. And again, I'm like looking for some like kind of earrings that someone who is into the retro vintage look is like, I'm here for retro vintage jewelry. And they're like, yes, the, this is what I'm looking for. And they don't necessarily have to be marked. So these are glorious. I actually want to keep these. I, this is like a chain, twisted chain wreath, rhinestones at the bottom, rhinestone in the middle. I just love these so much. These look so high end and they're not marked. I am like so surprised. Yeah, I am so surprised. I want to Google lens these. I really do. Maybe I'll put some up on the screen if I find out anything um, about these. But yeah, they just feel so nice. I love them so much. Okay, we have this right here and we see the little cartouche in there. It's missing one rhinestone, but I am going to fix this guy up uh, easily with that rhinestone right there. This is a classic Kenneth J. Lane clamper bracelet. So this one was priced um, very inexpensively because of the missing rhinestone, but again, I can fix it no problem. I think this one would also go in the booth. A lot of people do collect Kenneth J. Lane, and I think a lot of people also know the look of Kenneth J. Lane, so this would be a good one to put in the booth, in my opinion. Okay, <clears throat> next, statement clip-ons. Denise, uh, I'm gonna give you a little plug here, a little shout out. She was saying, like, sh um, she's kind of getting into 
the whole like reseller mindset. She's more of a collector and she collects a lot of fabulous things. But now that we opened up District, she's like, oh, I saw these big, massive cluster clip-on earrings. Should I have gotten them? And one of them was Ben Amun. I think that's how you pronounce it. And those are definitely ones to grab. Um, but I think big statement clip-on earrings right now are just in. Like people are fading away from the minimalist movement and people are trending more towards the maximalist artful avant-garde statement pieces. Um, I know a lot of us in the jewelry community are like, we're like that. <laughs> like, it's like the bigger, the better. And I think it's a very, I don't know if I have an artistic personality or what, but it's just like, you don't care what people think. I think that's the personality. It's like, you like what you like and then you wear it and you don't really care what people think. So these kind of go along with that. These are big, bold statement, acrylic, faceted, black, dangly, lovely earrings. All right. Next. I, don't, I think these might have been an extra, an extra little gift in the package. So thank you. Yeah, no, these are not marked, I don't think. But fun, classic, shiny triangles. These actually are super wearable right now. You guys, gold tone is in right now. Shiny gold tone. In as far as like the trend goes. So, yay. Okay, next, more clip-ons. I actually love reselling clip-ons and screwbacks. I would say a lot more than pierced earrings. Just because it's like, I like know that these are old and they're just so fun. Honestly, they're just fun. Um, unless it's like a Native American or artistic piece, I just really like clip-ons and screwbacks. So these look kind of like Whiting and Davis chainmail, but like button clip-ons. So that's really interesting. I don't think these are marked. Just silver tone. There are those. We have these prong set molded glass. Let's take a look. These are lovely. Robin's egg blue, like a climber kind of. Actually, you know what these look like? These look like blue milk glass. Tell me if I'm wrong, but that's what these totally look like. Molded blue milk glass, right? Isn't that what these look like? Lovely. Gorgeous. Yes. Booth. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to Google Lens these. These, these are kind of giving me Juliana vibes a little bit. So I'm curious about those. These very much look like some Christian Dior clip-on earrings that I have listed with the white cream enamel, very rich gold tone, and the rhinestones. These are like half hoops, very 1980s. But again, that look right now is like coming in, I think specifically with like Asian um, countries or buyers. Like they really like that chic jewelry look with like black blazers or um, whatever, New York look wardrobe. I don't think these are marked. But yeah, these are very, very, these feel very nice. Again, they might be marked somewhere. I just might have missed it, but lovely. Okay. These, mm, these just look like some hammered textured clip-ons unmarked. These, oh, these I think were another little gift, like a little extra in there. So we have these also some like half hoops and they kind of remind me of the slug earrings. I know that sounds terrible, but these might actually be called enamel slug earrings. I'll have to look into that further, but yeah, that is a term with earrings is like slug earrings. <laughs> look it up. That is a thing. Okay. We have these. Oh, oh, these just feel nice. Oh, these just feel so nice. And the clip-on, I am 
like, okay, so I'm wondering if these are Avon. It has a little circle and dot, but these feel so much nicer than Avon. <laughs> they really do. Like this piece, it even feels nicer than like Monet. It really does. But these are some shiny couture looking 1980s look, maybe 90s. Um, so this is like, because I was born in the 90s and, you know, I didn't wear jewelry in the 90s or anything. Um, when I think of different jewelry styles from which decade, I think of like movies from that time period and like what women wear. So like when I think of women in the 90s, I think of like movies like Home Alone and what the mom wore and she wore things like this in the 90s. So 80s going into 90s is 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 this style here. Okay, we have a few more. Ooh, this one again. This one looks like that older pot metal look. <laughs> it really does. Um, yeah, lovely. Going in the booth. This one was another gift from or it, it came with the R and the A Trifari. And this is a sweet little hair barrette. She must know that me and my girls have a lot of hair. <laughs> we totally do. And I do their hair every day. And they, I always ask them what hairstyle they want. And it's usually Elsa hairstyle. And so I do the whole French braid regularly. So thank you for that one. It's so gorgeous. We have these. Oh, again, these look totally like Monet and they're not marked. That is so surprising again. All right, so these are like a basket weave, puffy basket weave, silver tone, shiny clip on. Ooh, look at these. Like a raised rope look on a shadowed antiqued gold tone interesting maybe like a bronzish tone not marked lovely and then what is this looks like another hair piece I'm gonna take this out this one also came as a friend mail gift so how does this work? Oh, so that look, it looks like you do the ponytail and then you clip this on like a little bangle. Oh, or would it like, wouldn't it be cute as like a little American Girl doll bangle? But this would be so cute with a high ponytail. It's like hair jewelry. I am totally all about that. Hair jewelry every day, yes. Let's make that a thing as well. I know it is a, like a little bit of a thing, but let's make it a bigger thing. <laughs> All right, and then we have this stone that I think is Labradorite, right? Because I do see a flash. Do you guys see that? A little, like, Morpho flash in there. Um, and this came with this box, so from Foxy Stain Girl. All right, let's get into the rings. This was a sterling silver ring lot, and I'm going to be coming in and out from the video because there are little things to read and I'm going to be posting what I find out more about the brand or the maker up on the screen because I have not researched any of these things. Um, so this, yeah, we'll see how, <laughs> how this goes. All right, we see this lovely, I wanna keep this one already, Malachite Green Gorgeous probably gold over silver, so like a Mon uh, Verme. All right, what does it say in here? It says, it says P, J, something, maybe U, P, J, something, 925 China. So yeah, this is like sterling silver. It feels so nice. It's set. It's so pretty. It looks like a crown. I want to put like the most interesting ones are going in the booth behind the glass. So the ones that people are like, oh, can I see the rings? Right? That's the idea is you want. If I do have things behind a case under lock and key, I want it to be like, oh, can I, can I see 
<laughs> this because it stands out to me. All right, so we have this interesting ring here. It has, yeah, they're all different. I can feel a little ridge in there. That I have never seen that before. So they have cut these stones, these four stones, into one shaped stone. So I'm wondering if it, I don't know, is it glass? What could it be? All right, so that is just going to glass, 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 glass. Okay, so these are glass, but isn't that interesting? This very much looks like an artist piece for sure. All right, let's see where the marks are. Here we go. So it does say 925 and, oh my gosh, the tiniest thing right there. What does it say? For So for if you're looking for sterling silver marks, um, you know, don't really go into our Maker's Mark file. That's more for costume jewelry because there are so many sterling silver makers out there. There are different websites that will tell you different, like Native American, non-Native American, or Mexican uh, marked jewelry pieces. But again, sometimes you might just have to put sterling silver and signed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that one's interesting. This one is a mother of pearl. It very much reminds me of like a Thailand made ring. This band is actually really thick. Feels very, very nice and comfortable. I think that thicker bands are very comfortable. I'm actually wearing this really interesting one today. It's a Labrador Labradorite Silpata, and it totally looks like hieroglyphics on the side. But it's a square ring. Isn't that fun? And you know I love the Labradorite, so we're wearing that today. All right, let's see. Mark. This one says 925BA, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one was a Thailand ring, but I will check into that. This one is super interesting to me, like super interesting. It's the buckle, so it's kind of like equestrian couture looking. It has baguettes, pink rhinestones. Isn't this so, so pretty? All right, we see China. Let's see, what else? We see 925. Interesting. So this is a Vermeer ring. Probably a size 8 to 9. And it is really pretty. I like that one a lot, actually. All right, next we have did that one already. We have this very sparkly and faceted. Let's see what it says on the inside. There we go. This one actually does say Thailand. And it does say, I think HF or NF925. Let's check the Presidium here for if it is anything. This one is something I would put in the booth. All right, so it is, it looks from this angle like it's at the top of the red, but if I were to look straight on, it's actually more in the garnet tourmaline eyelight. So I'm wondering if it's a tourmaline. Do they have like dyed CZs? I don't know. So let's, let me show you if I can get it like this. What could this be, you guys? So we're past the glass and we're into the tourmaline. I'm not sure. What do we think? Hmm, interesting. I'll have to look into this one a little bit further. And then this actually looks very Art Deco with how it's set. I'm not sure if it's that old. There's the back. Then it says... Hmm, what does it say? It says something there, 925. So I'm thinking these are just CZs, right? Let's take a peek. Or glass, maybe glass. Yeah, maybe glass. Glass and sterling. 
All right, but look at this one. This one again looks very like Art Deco style and has a tiny little like chip of something with the f where it's meant to look bigger than it is by making the setting. So we'll see what this little chippy is. Yeah, the little chips are diamonds. Oh, my hand was in the way the whole time. All right, let's go again. These little chippies are diamonds. We have little diamonds in there. Oh, that noise is hitting metal. But yeah, these are probably... I am so sorry. <laughs> Those chips are so tiny. All right, let's see. I'm wondering if these little side ones... Okay, it's going to be... It's going to be a struggle with the camera and with the pin. Bear with me. Okay, it's going up. Yep, so these are all little diamond halos all around it. That is so lovely. And it says 925. So lovely. I think I would put this in the booth. That is so lovely. <laughs> Be like diamond. <laughs> diamond and sterling. This one looks more like modernist, right? That one I would put in the booth. I think I would put this one in the booth as well. This one has like three tone. Might be meaningful to somebody. Let's let's check the little stones on here. Because they're little. Oh, they're diamonds. Little tiny diamonds. Maybe it's gold. Let's see. It says 925. 925 China something something. All right, we have that. We have these like hibiscus flowers. This one says, oh, it says something. It definitely has a maker in there and it says more than sterling. It says something else. I'll have to put it up on the screen. And then we have this little like love knot sterling silver ring that is just super sweet. Maybe I'll just put them all in the booth. <laughs> just have a, an array. Um, but yeah, so that is what I got from District. You guys, there are deals and bling and goodness to be had there. Go ahead and support your fellow Lily Works um, community. And yeah, go ahead and shop there. It is super, super lovely. All right, let's take a look at some of these pieces I got from the thrift store. I have been considering which pieces I want to put in the booth, um, which ones I want to put online, but I decided I'll just show you so that I can actually make these decisions um, instead of having them sit in the bag forever. Oh, I love these so much. Some of these were half off. I don't remember the tag, but the tag color. Let's see. What are these? I love these little tassel and these are Napier. This actually looks like a, a newer Napier mark, but it actually looks vintage style. So with this little chain tassel detail, this definitely looks old and interesting and I need your guys' opinion. So we have this kind of clasp, the C looking clasp, and it very much looks like old tubes. Um, I don't think they're gold. And it's very interesting. Prong set green. Oh, I totally want to know. Now that I'm thinking about it, I totally want to know if these are Vaseline or uranium rhinestones. Now that we have green rhinestones. Okay, I have my little black light here. I want to see. Maybe they glow. Probably need to turn off the light to see better. Let me just... I don't think so. I don't think they're glowers, but that is something I've been trying to keep in mind is like that some like yellow and green and whitish rhinestones are glowers. And that's like the new hot trend on TikTok right now, as far as vintage glass and jewelry. We have this lovely, super lovely acorn. Let me take him off. This is a good statement piece for sure. What are you marked? This one says Mamzelle. I have not sold a Mamzelle before. <laughs> a Mamzelle acorn. Hmm. 
interesting. But look at this. I love the shiny detail on the acorn top. Gives it a really nice look. It's like shiny. And then the rest is textured matte. Oh, I love that. Little puffy acorn. Okay, one of my favorite pieces. I have an obsession with enameled copper and this is just a beast of a pendant fun colorful swirl it's not marked which is it's okay it's surprising and it's fine <laughs> to not be marked super fun barrel clasp wood beads oh groovy right <laughs> that's the word it, this is groovy okay next is this right here totally looks like a sterling silver clasp let's see if it's marked anywhere hmm no but we have genuine pearls galore look at these uh, bluish gray Tahitian looking colored pearls and then other pearls and more pearls and crystals and then we come to this purple stone and then we have these. What are these? These are some, these are not Biwa pearls. What are they? They're something. They're not rice pearls. They're huge. But yes, when I see stuff like this, they, it's just glorious. I love finding things like this at the thrift store. And we have this one. Um, more rocks that I don't know. This looks more like a, uh, what am I thinking of where it's different um, rock types put together? I don't remember what I'm thinking of. A bunch of rocks I don't know. Maybe jaspers. Maybe these are all just different types of jasper. More genuine pearls. Um, then we have this clasp here. I don't know if it says anything. Let's see. Magnet again. Magnetic. But this just feels so nice and high quality. Love it. Oh, and the pink crystals. So pretty. We have this piece. Guess what this one is, you guys. This one is a lovely, lovely scrolling Monet. And it is in tip top excellent shape. I have been doing super well with Monet pieces, uh, so yes, this one, definite yes for me. I love finding my Monet. This guy I had to rescue, this one I believe is genuine tortoise shell carved, and he's a little seahorse. He's stinking adorable. He's just tiny. Had to get him. I don't know how I'm going to sell him or what, but he is just too cute and I, you guys know you can't sell genuine tortoise shell on online but it was just way too cute all right we have a couple like I don't know these were all in the men's accessories area and I know this video is getting long but I've learned to be like that's okay and to not apologize for it because when I am watching people that I enjoy uh, I'm just like, don't let it end. Keep going. <laughs> so, I mean, um, that's what we're doing here. So I believe that this is a lingerie clip. It's a tiny, tiny, it looks like a tie clip, little tiny black stone, Greek key frame. And is this mother of pearl? Maybe mother of pearl in there. Um, and then it looks like I need to bend this little piece over right there to make it a little bit more secure. But I loved this now that I know what these are, these little lingerie pins. And then this one looked really, I think, what are these? These might just be Anson or something, but I really like the richness of this set. So let me take it out. I might sell this one in the booth actually because it does just look so dapper and just a good gift. So that's a lot of what I'm like thinking of when I um, 
I'm thinking of what I want to put in the booth is like, what is something that would grab someone's attention in regards to a gift? Because when people are gift shopping, they have a certain price range in mind, but they're not like comparing comps on eBay for the most part. So that's just my thought on, you know, jewelry pieces or pieces I'm putting in the booth. So I did not know that this, that this is what this was. This is actually a watch um, chain, right? And look at the detail, that rich red enamel, tiny, tiny little stone. It looks like a marcasite in there. Let's see. What are you marked? Are you marked anything? Uh, that is surprising to me. Okay, I need to find out what this is because these are just lovely. Are you marked anything? Hmm, I don't see a marking, but these just feel so nice. So nice. Hmm, now I'm really curious as to what this is. All right, I'm just going to test over here on the Presidium to see if this little chip on here might be like a diamond chip again, like a tiny, tiny little diamond chip. You guys, it's a little tiny diamond chip. Really? So these are little tiny diamonds. Wow, this one I'm definitely gonna be researching. That is exciting. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed going through all this beautiful bling jewelry. I hope you guys learned something or at least had a relaxing and enjoyable time. Um, and if you guys think that anyone else would enjoy this channel or these videos, make sure to share this channel. Be sure to leave me some comments and love down in the comments section below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up on your way out and I will see you guys probably for my part two live jewelry unboxing, unbagging that I'm going to be doing um, and you guys are welcome to come. It's going to be probably on an evening. Um, I usually announce it in the Facebook groups a little bit beforehand and then we just hang out, chit chat, sort jewelry. And yeah, so if you're not already signed up on District, you don't have to be a seller to be on District. You can be a buyer, you can be a watcher, just you can um, just join our community over there. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.